Hey guys, it's a very exciting day because this episode we finally get to take the engine off the engine stand. Yay! Yes, it's been a very long time coming, putting this all together, getting all the wiring right and all the rest of it, but we're actually at that stage. We are finally ready to try and get this off of the engine stand. That's my first challenge, really, because I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it. I have a, uh, a lift table here. That's what I actually use to get the engine out of the car. It's a fantastic piece of gear. I'll, I'll put a link to something similar in the description. I've had this for a few years. It's a 500 kilo lift table and I can raise it and lower it um, so I can sort of uh, position the engine and stuff. It is a really good bit of gear. But the only issue is that it doesn't fit under the engine stand. You can't sort of slide one under the other. So um, I have to sort of try and lift this up, hopefully with the engine crane. Um, I'm just not sure how I'm going to uh, attach myself to the engine, but uh, I'll work that out. And yeah, I need to attach it to the engine crane and then lift the engine up, uh, slide the stand out, slide the lift table under, and hopefully um, it all uh, goes smoothly. All right, so there's no really good uh, attachment methods on this engine. I have attached it to the, uh, the, the frame here at the front. That is a good, that's a nice solid point. Going beyond that, it's quite difficult. I've actually uh, wrapped this, uh, the main uh, weight is being wrapped all the way around underneath the engine. So I've just put a strap all the way underneath the belly. And then I've done a strap from the front over the top and down to uh, around one of the bolts on the back. I just realized I can attach it to the yoke because the yoke is going to stay attached to the engine and it's already holding the engine. So I've attached it to the yoke and attach it to there and that would be quite a, a nice solid uh, mount. I, at the moment I've got it attached to this bolt which is off center. The yoke is much more centered. So I'm going to uh, just redo that but then uh, I can lift the whole engine up, slide the engine stand out, uh, leaving the yoke attached and then move uh, this here which has got uh, lots of parts sitting on it. This is my lift table. I can slide the lift table underneath and uh, we can have an engine sitting on a table. Once I made sure that I wasn't sort of uh, tweaking anything, uh, like uh, when I first started trying to lift it, I was uh, pushing on the ITBs and stuff like that. I don't want to obviously damage any of that stuff. Once I sorted all that out, it actually came off pretty easily. So that's one big stress off. And uh, I've now got the engine, I've got a few blocks underneath the engine so that it's not actually sitting on the um, uh, the headers. It's um, it's just sitting on the on the base of the engine. It's not sitting on the sump. It's all lifted up and uh, sitting nice and nice and flat. So now it's time to go through and start uh, removing the yoke and finish putting everything on the engine. All the uh, engine tins I've still got to put on the um, uh, the oil cooler and a bunch of other stuff. So let's uh, let's start tackling that. Okay, so the next issues I have with this engine is uh, trying to get these engine tins on. And now that I've got some wiring looms, I need to make some sort of little pass through so that the, uh, uh, the loom can get through to the lower, lower coil packs. Because obviously originally this wasn't twin plug, so uh, I didn't have a need to get uh, loom through. And I don't want to go on the outside of this because this is what uh, sort of seals around the rubber to the engine bay. So I need to uh, just notch into some of these. So I need to uh, do a notch in the corner of this to get this loom through. I also have to go through and uh, on this rear tin over here, I need to cut out this uh, hole so that it'll go over the top of the uh, the cam angle sensor. So uh, 
let's start doing some little trimming and uh, making some uh, allowances for some loom. This has all come together quite nicely. All the uh, teamwork is now on with the uh, oil cooler. Uh, I managed to get the rubber grommet kit that I've got. I've just got a generic uh, box of rubber grommets and found grommets the right size to uh, put through for uh, all the wires to go through to the uh, lower valve covers um, through the tins. I've also used some rubber edging to uh, uh, go around the cam angle sensor down here. So this is now all bolted on. I am starting to worry that uh, my loom might be a little bit short, but uh, I might be able to extend. Uh, if, if need be, I can sort of see where I can make one or two tiny little extensions and it won't be the end of the world. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But for now, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. It's time to start looking at putting on my flywheel. Okay, so I had my flywheel machine. It's uh, looking nice and tidy. And I got myself a, uh, a new... Uh, spigot bearing so I'm going to press that in now with the uh, the press and we can install our flywheel Alright, the uh, flywheel is on, it's all torqued up, so that is, uh, that's all good. Now it's time to put the clutch on, and some of you might not uh, like the idea of this, but I'm going to reuse the old clutch. Uh, 911 clutches are really expensive, this has still got a lot of meat on it, and um, um, it may be older, but I've set it up now so that I can drop everything pretty quickly and change it over if I need to, but um, I don't think it's worth outlaying all that, uh, all that money to change the clutch if uh, this one is still going to be serviceable. It's, it's old, but it all seems to be uh, in reasonable shape, so I'm going to give it a go. Now, saying that, I don't actually have the tool to, uh, to center the clutch plate. And those of you who haven't actually put clutches on before um, may not realize this, but basically this, this is the, um, the center clutch plate that sits in uh, uh, against the flywheel, and the way that you get power to the wheels is when this is clamped between the uh, clutch wheel and the uh, and the flywheel itself, that's what gives you your uh, power to the wheels. This is this is your your friction point. Now to get this perfectly in line, this is basically floating underneath this disc that I've got to put on. And if you don't get it perfectly centered and perfectly in line, you won't get the gearbox on. The gearbox just won't go in and it can be a real nightmare. It can be an absolute pig. Now, I don't have the tool. You can actually have tools like, that's the tool from my Datsun. So basically it's got a, uh, a, a spline in it that matches in with the, uh, the spline on the clutch and, uh, and a smaller inner spline that goes into the, uh, um, the pilot bearing in, in here. So getting these two things lined up is the real critical thing. What I've managed to do is I managed to find, um, it's a ratchety tool thing I've got that uh, I've managed to build up with some tape um, to get a nice tight fit into the, uh, the pilot bearing and build up with the tape around the edge back up here, uh, which lines up with the, uh, the clutch plate itself. So I'm hoping that will work to uh, actually help me mount this in. So that's what I'm going to use. So let's try and bolt the clutch on now. And fingers crossed I can get it to get it to centre. Because otherwise it's going to be a pig to get that gearbox on. Thank you. 
And that'll teach me for racing ahead because I just realized I forgot to install the, uh, the washer on the flywheel. So I've got to undo all of this, undo the flywheel again, put the washer on, tighten it all up again and move forward. <laughs> we'll get there. Alright, so a lot of you have asked me about my gearbox, about whether I'm going to rebuild it or what the condition of it is, and the answer is, is I'm going to run it and see, because um, it could be good, it could be absolute junk, but um, again, it's not that hard to pull it in and out, um, I'm not just going to pull it apart just for the sake of it, so um, if I have to rebuild it, it'll be something you will definitely see in the future, uh, but for now, I'm going to go through and just clean it, because it's uh, it's been sitting under my house for four years now or however long it's been uh, since I pulled it out. So I'm gonna go through, just give it a nice quick clean up and, uh, and then we can start looking at bolting it back onto the engine. All right, so I've uh, given the gearbox a quick clean up. Uh, no, it is not scrubbed within an inch of its life and uh, shiny and glamorous. It's gonna be hidden right up under the car. And uh, it might trigger some of you guys, but uh, I'm quite comfortable with, uh, with living like that. Yes, I am going to uh, attack it before I get going and it's just gonna change the fluids and stuff, but I wanna bolt it to the engine first. I am gonna put a, a little bit of grease on the, um, the, the center shaft uh, that's going, going, going in. Um, and maybe a tiny little bit on the um, uh, on the tips of the forks, but that's that's it. And because uh, you definitely don't want any grease going uh, around inside your clutch, because uh, your clutch is not going to work with any grease. It's going to be perfectly dry, clean uh, surface. So um, I'm just going to get in there, just uh, put that on, and then put this on the jack and see if I can lift it up and bolt it up to the engine. Yay! Oh, that was some big steps forward. This is uh, really, really coming together now. Uh, I am, I'm getting really excited about actually putting this thing back into the car. Um, there's still a little bit to do on this before I put it in. I still have some things to do in the engine bay. Um, I've got to reinstall the oil tank and some things like that. So I need to prepare the engine bay to reinstall the engine, but we are really, really close now. So, um, all right, well, that is all I have time for this week. Um, as always, uh, if you need any Porsche parts, check out PorschePartsByJeffBot.com. Um, great price comparisons there, and uh, you can make sure you check there before you buy anywhere. And um, all the usual, like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Help us out on Patreon and see the day videos a day early. All right, guys, see you next time.